Let's take a look at how to multiply and divide decimals by powers of 10. They're asking us to divide 32.5 divided by 100. All right, well, let's for a second, let's look at a simpler problem because I want you guys to think for a minute about place value. And remember that our place value system is based on 10. Okay, so if let's say I took the number four, if I've multiplied four times 10, that would give me 40. If I multiplied four times 100, that would give me the number 400. So notice when I multiply by 10, it changes where the four is, right? If it was just four times one, then my four is in the ones place. When I multiply by, by 10, right, four times 10, now my four is in the tens place, making it 10 times bigger. When I multiply by 100, now my four is in the hundreds place. Now, if I was dividing, instead of making it bigger, it would make it smaller. So if I went in the other direction, if I said 400 divided by 10, well, dividing by 10 would make it one place value smaller, right? B basically taking away one zero. So 400 divided by 10 would be just 40. So notice it went from my four being in the hundreds place to my four being in the tens place. Okay, so when we multiply by 10, we make our number bigger, right? We move it from the tens to the hundreds, right? From the ones to the tens to the hundreds place, basically adding zeros. When we divide, our number becomes smaller by, by one place value for each 10 we divide by. Okay, now the same is gonna be true with decimals. So now let's take a look at our decimal answer. Okay, so this question said 32.5 divided by 100. And I wanna keep in mind that since 100 is right 10 times 10, it's a power of 10 is a way to think about that, that we can answer this question by moving our place value. Well, since we're dividing, dividing always makes a number smaller. So to make our number smaller, we would have to move our decimal point to the left, right? If we moved it to the right, that would be making our number bigger. And notice I've got two zeros. So that means I'm gonna move my decimal point two places. So if I move that decimal point two places, it's gonna land right in front of the three. So 0 0.325 would be 32.5 divided by 100, right? We just had to move our decimal point two places to divide when we have those two zeros. Okay, following that same idea, this time I have 16.3 divided by 10. Well, since I'm dividing, that should make my number smaller. And to make this number smaller, when I move the place value, I'm gonna have to move my decimal point to the left. Since there's only one zero, right? It's just one, one 10 in this number. I only have to move my decimal point one place. So if I move my decimal point one place to the left, it's gonna land in between the one and the six. So that would be 1.63. This time we're dividing by 100. So again, since we're dividing, we're gonna make our number smaller. That means our decimal point is gonna to move to the left. This time there's two zeros that we're dividing by, right? 100 instead of 10, like we had in the last question. So this time, I'm gonna move my decimal point two places, and it's gonna land in front of the one. So that's gonna give me 0 0.163, right? Notice if I had 0.163, I can always fill in the zero in front.
15 divided by 100. Now I can use this even if it doesn't look like a decimal. Keep in mind that 15 is the same thing as 15.0 or 15.00, right? I could keep going. I could put as many zeros as I want on the end of that decimal. When I'm dividing by 100, well, that has two zeros. So I'm going to move my decimal point two places. And since I'm dividing, I want it to be smaller. So two places to the left. Okay, so my decimal point is going to land in front of the 1, and that's going to give me 0 0.15. And of course, I could write my zeros in here. I don't need to. 0 0.15. 42 times 100. Okay, well notice when we were dividing, it made our number smaller, so we were moving the decimal point to the left. When we're multiplying, we're making our number bigger, so we should be moving our decimal point to the right. So again, if you think of this as being 42.0, well, if I move that two places to the right, one, two, that's gonna give me 4,200. Okay, you can also say, well, if I'm multiplying a whole number by 100, that's basically just telling me to add two zeros on the end of it. So even without using the decimal point, I could say, okay, if I was multiplying by 10, I would add one zero on the end. Since I'm multiplying by 100, I'm going to add two zeros on the end. And that's going to give me 4,200. 21.5 times 10. Okay, well, I'm multiplying, so to make my number bigger, my decimal point should move to the right. And there's only one zero, so I'm only going to move it one place. So that's going to give me 215 or 215.0 if you're thinking about that decimal point. But remember, point zero doesn't do anything. So even if you wrote it that way, it's the same exact thing as 215. 5.4 times 10. Okay, well since I'm multiplying by 10, I'm gonna make my number bigger, so my decimal point is gonna move to the right, and there's only one zero, so I'm only going to move it one place. So that's going to give 54. 6.9 times 10. Okay, well I'm going to move my decimal point one place to the right to make my number bigger, right, moving it one place since there's one zero. So that's going to give me 69. 40 divided by 10. Okay, well, if you think of this as being 40.0, dividing by 10 is gonna make my number smaller or move it one decimal point. So that's gonna give me four. Now, if you don't wanna think about the decimals here, since 40 is not written as a decimal, you can also think, well, I'm gonna take away one zero, right? So if I take away one zero, that's gonna leave me with just four. 43.6 times 10. Okay, well, multiplying by 10 should move my decimal point one place to the right. So that gives me 436.0, if you're looking at that decimal point, or that's the same thing as just 436. 